Hello everyone, today I would like to show off the Curse Beta Client, which as of now I think it's my favorite way of creating a custom Minecraft mod pack. It's so easy to do, most mods you can download with a single click with this, assuming they're on CurseForge, which quite a few mods are now. And I've tried many, many different ways of creating mod packs in the past. I've done anything from the vanilla launcher to multi-MC, which is probably my second favorite. And now this. So what you want to do to get this is you want to go to beta.cursevoice.com and just click on download now. Download that setup file, run it, install the program, and you will get this. So the first thing I would do is click up here and go to settings. And here you can customize some stuff. Most notably go to Minecraft and you can set the directory to install everything to. I set a custom directory on the root of my C drive just to make everything easy to access. And you can set a default window resolution. I don't know if this is just a bug that I have though, but whenever I start the curse client, it changes the height to a very large number, something like 100,000. I don't know why it does that, but it does. You can customize the maximum memory here, and you can also put in additional Java parameters if you need to, but I haven't seen any need to. It, it takes care of the perm gen space, everything that you would normally have trouble with creating a mod pack automatically. So let's see, I actually wanted to delete this. So let's create a new mod pack. So if we click, click on add mod pack, it will show us a list of existing mod packs, which consists of a variety of FTB packs, as well as some that I believe are unique to the Curse Launcher, such as Agrarian Skies 2. And you can just click install to grab any of these mod packs if you want. But what I want to do is click on Create Custom Profile up here. Here we can enter a name for the pack. We can select the Minecraft version. This works well with 1.7.10, but 1.8 was a little funny last time I tried it. And you can select the Forge version. Currently the latest is 14.01, and I think the recommended version right now is 12.91. But we should try the latest version first. So click OK. And that will download and install whatever it needs to. So now we could play this as it is. It won't be very interesting since there aren't any mods installed, but it does have Forge. So we can see it's created a custom profile here, and this is the vanilla Minecraft launcher that it is making you go through. So we can take a look at the profile settings. It set our resolution automatically according to what I had set up here. You can see it's got the Forge version we selected. It's got some JVM arguments already put in. It's got the maximum memory that I specified. It's got 256 perm gen and a variety of other stuff, which I don't really know what it means, and I'm not going to mess with, because it works just fine as it is. So we can click play, that will launch Minecraft. Hopefully. Yes, there we go. And here we go, we've got a modded Minecraft client. It doesn't have any mods installed, other than Forge. So why don't we grab some mods? So we could click get mods here, or we could click get more content. And if you click get more content, it usually puts you on resource packs by default. So be sure to click on mods over here. And we can use this search bar. We can enter the name of the mod. We could enter the mod author. So for example, team COFH will get us all of the team COFH mods. And this will, for most mods, install dependencies automatically. It doesn't always work especially well for some mods, but uh, for a lot of the bigger ones, it will handle everything on its own. So if we install Thermal Foundation, 
that also installed COFH lib and core. And let's also put in thermal expansion. And let's see, let's grab the one mod that I currently have on Curse Fort, Silence Gems. Just throw that in there, just because. And what else? How about NEI? So, uh, putting in NEI won't work because it's not called NEI, it's called Not Enough Items. I normally just type in Chicken because the author's name is Chicken Bones. So install Not Enough Items. It'll install Code Chicken Core on its own. And now we've got a very basic mod pack that we can play. Let's test it out. Just to make sure that everything's working. Okay, and it did that to me last time. It did not focus the window for some reason. Alright, so we got 10 mods now as opposed to 3. And it looks like it installed everything. So there we go. Minecraft music, you are loud, go away. And now you can just go create your world, whatever you want to do. I thought I turned down the music. Okay, well, do whatever you like, Minecraft. Maybe it's a forge bug. So, what if you want to add a mod that is not on CurseForge, though? Well, back on this main screen here, which you can get to by just clicking Minecraft, you can right-click on your mod pack and click Open Folder. And that will take you to the instance folder for this pack. And this is just like your .minecraft folder if you've ever modded through the vanilla launcher itself. So we've got a mods folder here. Just drop the jar files for the mods into here. Just click and drag them, copy them, however you like to do it. And you should be good to go. Let me go ahead and just grab a mod as an example. Okay, here's one. I'll just copy that here. And let's see if that'll show up in the file list. Usually mods that you add to the mods folder will show up in the file list here. It's a little bit funny about not refreshing for whatever reason. But if we launch Minecraft... Okay, and let's take a look. So we do have the mod that I added. This is a mod that I'm working on, and it will be released on CurseForge pretty soon. But I've just had some technical issues. Okay, so from this screen here, which you get to by clicking somewhere around here other than the play button, you see these green switches. You can enable or disable mods by just clicking on these. It's useful for diagnosing problems with your mod pack. And if you want to, you can click the X to delete them. So now let's take a look at another pack that I've created in the past. This is my custom mod pack that I use for my Let's Play series. So you can see there's a very long list of mods. And by the X on some of the mods, there's an update button, which you can just click this and it will update the mod. But I don't want to do that here because I've got this running on a server. So if we scroll down a ways, you can see starting right here, it says author unknown. And that is because these mods are not on CurseForge, so it doesn't know who made them. But they will show up and you can click the button over here to enable or disable them. And from this screen, if you have a mod pack that's hosted on CurseForge, it will, if the mod pack has an update available, it'll show a little update button for the pack right, right about here, I think. And you can just hover over that and click update, and it will update the mod pack for you. So I think that's about all there is to show here. So the beta curse client makes it extremely easy to create a mod pack just one click installs all over the place. It's so much easier to create a mod pack now than it was in the past. It's something that's been getting easier and easier as time goes on. So thank you for watching this video. If you want to, you can scroll down and click on that subscribe button. If you want to 
keep up with other videos I'm doing. Like I mentioned before, I do have a Minecraft Let's Play on this little mod pack here. And I will see you guys next time.